Hey guys, I'm back, and today's tutorial is going to be refresh style. So let's get started. But first, let me show you what that looks like. So pretty much what I'll teach you is like kind of the block design, I guess, with the shadows and how to do like a background kind of like this. So I don't know if it's really called refresh style or anything, but I don't really know what else to call it. So let's just call it that for now. So first thing, what you want to do. I like to make the background the plain one. The ground doesn't matter because we'll just be making that black. Next, let's just start with like simple block design and stuff. So what I typically do is use these saw blades and I just make them black. I'll send them to color one and it'll be black and that whole thing will be black. So pretty much there's one key word that pretty much summarizes this kind of style and that word is layering pretty much you have to keep your layering in check in order to be successful doing this style or else like your backgrounds might get screwed up or whatever so you see this is top so we have that top and we don't need to set it to a group and now you see when we put something over it let's go over here and we'll make this white. You see, you don't see that. And that's because this saw blade was top and this is middle. So you have to set this to top. And see, now you have it over. And now we'll just make that smaller to look nicer. So now I have this saw blade, but maybe it needs something a bit more to make it look better. So we're going to put a shadow behind it. And that's really simple. All I have to do, go here, use these blocks. And I like to use these ones. Boom, boom. And guys, sorry if I'm still slow with the shortcuts. The main reason I am really slow with the shortcuts still in learning them is because I create on an iPad. I only go on Steam whenever I make these tutorials for you guys. So we'll move that shadow wherever, like over here. And we'll set that to middle or bottom, whichever, as long as it's under this one. And now when you see that, it kind of looks like a shadow. That looks pretty nice. Just like that. Next, we can make like a custom orb or a custom portal. I don't really recommend doing these like custom portals or whatever. But for certain levels, it's, it is just kind of necessary to make it look better. So in this case, we'll set this to one. And then the way to make objects invisible, if you don't know, is use an alpha trigger and this sets the opacity to whatever you want. And we'll make the fade times zero and the opacity will be zero, making this invisible. Wait, but right now I can't see that because I have to build something over it first. Let's set this to zero. So now we have this orb here. All we have to do is use a little circle and we will Make that smaller. We'll make this white. And then we copy and paste this. And then now layering, you see, before that one was 10, we want this on top. We could put it top, but then instead we can just make this 11, which is a higher number than 10. That means it'll be over it. And we'll make this a bit smaller. Also, change the color. And now we have a custom orb right here. Now all I have to do is make sure to check this alpha, make it zero, and we have a custom orb, just like that. And it's not bumping because I have the music off, so just to let you know. Like normally in a level with music, it would be like pulsing, but I don't have the music on, so it's not doing that. And next, like a custom portal, I think that's self-explanatory, it's the same principle and mechanics as the custom orb, you put the... You put the portal. Oh, whoops! You put the portal right here. Set it to uh, whatever alpha group you made invisible. And I'll just make a super quick lane portal. All right, let's go. So all you do, since that's a ship, we want to make that purple. Uh, next color is four. So uh, that looks about right. And then we can just go like that. And we can make this black. 
And there you have a custom portal. That's as simple as it gets. And now when you play this right here, you have that orb. And you have... <clears throat> you have that custom portal. And then for spikes, you can add shadows to those too. As you see here, remember our color was one, which was black, so we do that. And then we're going to copy paste that. Like this. So we have that right there. And then we can also add a shadow to the spikes to add for more effect. So we can go to these blocks over here. Where are they? Right here. Oops. Alright, go to here. And we want to put these in the middle. That seems about right. And these are color 1, 2, but then if we do it like this, it just looks like a weird triangle. So what we're going to do is set this to another group and make the opacity a bit lower. But instead of making this invisible, we'll just make it look more faded. So let's say 60 or whatever. And now that looks a bit more like a shadow right there. Now all we have to do is copy and paste this. And there you have it, some simple block design tips. Oh, and one more thing I forgot. You see how we put a shadow here? We can do this with the orb in the portal too, easy, just like this. And make sure uh, your layering stone check. Let's double check to see what this was. See, this was middle, and this is middle too. I forgot what the Z order was, but we'll just make it bottom, so it'll be on the bottom. And there we have that. And then to put a shadow for here, we can use these blocks, like so. Let me do that real quick. I really gotta learn these shortcuts. They're probably really helpful. Oh shoot, is that the right block? Nope, that's not the right block. So yeah, I just want to emphasize on the point that you have to really be careful of layering when you do this style. Or else maybe this shadow, for example. What group is it? This is bottom. Bottom 9. This is bottom negative 6. Since negative 6 is lower than 9, you see what happens here? See? It's over it. So what you do... You can either change this to negative 7 which is lower than negative 6 or easier you can just change this to middle instead of bottom so now that'll be on top and now when you look at this let's move this over a bit whoops shoot the portals in the same one all right let's move that all right and now we move this we have our custom like saw custom orb custom portal and spikes all right now let's start a background so let's just set this all the group something else since we won't be using it anymore so all right now that's out of the way let's start our custom background over here and why don't we change our background color or we don't need to do that yet so right now let's start let's move this out of the way too so for our custom background let's just start with these blocks I have custom blocks that are super big save objects and it just makes making these tutorials quicker I copied this block off of Galvatron's level impasse I can actually show you real quick if you want to know just right here you go options and boom he uses like big objects I don't know how he gets them but then what I do I click here and add it and now I have a custom super sized block anyways back to the level so we have these we'll send the group one because it will be our custom background or not group one whatever group is free for you and then, next, we'll actually set to a 
So that's our uh, move to X group. And actually, I need the the reference lines for uh, for that. Okay. So our move to X was group three. So we'll do that. One, two, three, and we'll just make it ten seconds. And now we'll want this in that middle line. So we'll do this. And now that's going through the middle. And we'll make this black. Oh, that's color 19. Let's change it to 5. Okay. So we have that. And we're going to want this to move down. And we'll set that to another group. So a lot of people ask me why I put my objects in different groups. I could just put it all to one group. But this is just the way I create. I like to set everything to the same move to X, and I feel like that's more organized. Anyway, so we have that set to the group 3, which is the move to X. And we have this to uh, 5. And now we'll put two move triggers for 4 and 5. 4 going down, 5 going up. So, And for the eases, it really depends on what you want. I'll just do ease in, ease out for now. We'll just have it move negative 60. And then its counterpart, which is going up, to be 60. So this is what we have first off, which is not what I wanted. I accidentally put it to move the X instead of move the Y. That's a mistake I make a lot. I don't know if other people do, but that's something you should keep in mind. So now that we have this all fixed up, you can see that when we start, we have those move out of the way. Now let's add a bit more to that. So we have this, it's two. We'll copy paste this, get rid of this four and five, and make it a layer lower. And we'll actually change the color too, color six. And let's make the main color. Uh, what do you, what do I want it? Uh, let's just have it blue, whatever. Anyways, we have that to blue. We copy paste that again. We'll set it to the next one, a layer lower. And color seven, we'll make it a brighter shade of blue. And let's just do that one more time. A layer lower, different, uh, different color and we'll make that brighter also I hope I'm doing these colors right so they don't look all wacky anyways now we set the move triggers so first we have this moving down to reveal this new color background I guess and actually let's just set this uh, background to black so first Let's see what this looks like, just on the offset. Okay, you can't see those because I made the background black, but see, there. You have like a cool background transition, but let's add to that. So now, you have this right here. We'll set it to a new group, uh, whatever. Group six, group seven, group eight, Group 9, and so on. You guys get the juice. Alright, so now, starting from where? 6. So we have this move down first, and we'll want that to move down next. So we have our 4, and we were doing alternating numbers, so I can just do every two. It's really nice that way. Eight, ten. And then, when you go to five, you have five here. We know that this is seven. We know that this is nine. Why is this a six? Whoops. You know, this is seven. 9 and 11. 
And now that we have this, wait, hold on. Okay, let's make this not black since we can't see that. That makes things a bit difficult. So what we can do, we have our, let's have a purple background, why not? We'll copy this color and paste it here. And now you can't even tell that there, that transition will pop up until you go right here. Right there. And in addition, what you can do, you see how it was purple when you opened it up? So over here, we'll change the background to fit with that transition. So that'll be light blue. So as you can see, it goes from dark blue to light blue, just like that. And let's double check these colors. Maybe let's make this a little darker and this a little darker. Well, I'll make sure the colors look different or else they'll all look like the same layer. And now when you play this, we're gonna have a really neat transition, just like that. And then if you want them to like not go all the way out, then you can change this instead of negative 60 to like negative 30 and then this one you'll make that even less so that they stay on your screen. But anyways, that concludes this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I get this request a lot for uh, what you call refresh style. And I guess that's it. See you next time.